Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're planting fall crops. We're right in the area near where we planted the flower seeds recently. I went over some uh, varieties of flower seeds you can plant late in the season and still expect to see blooms by the end of the season. And that's kind of what we're doing today, but with uh, food crops instead. I've got a little bit of space left in this new garden that we set up this year and I'm hoping after today that I have it pretty much filled up. You can see the haze of green. Those are all the flower seedlings and I stopped at the obelisk. So I still need to plant the rest of that row and then I have these four rows open yet. So planting a fall garden is really easy. There's just a few key pieces of information you need to know, much like with the flowers. It's kind of the same thing. You need to figure out your first average frost date in the fall. You can Google it if you want to, your zip code and first average frost date. You can ask somebody at the extension office in your area or at your local garden center. For me, I know we have I wanna say we have about 75, 80 days, maybe a little bit more uh, until our first frost date. So I have quite a bit of time to get some of these short day crops up and going and producing. You also need to know the maturity day of the variety of plant that you want to grow. Um, and that way you'll know, like based on that first average frost date, you count back from that day to the day you wanna plant and that's how many days you have. Um, you can even tack on a few extra days if you want to just to kind of add yourself a little bit of a buffer because as we get closer Closer to that first average frost date, the nights are longer, they're a lot cooler, the temps are just cooling down, so things don't grow quite as rapidly. So if you count back to your uh, day that you're planting and then even add like 10 or 14 days, you'll be even safer. So we're looking for things that have a very short window very short maturity day um, so that we make sure that they have enough time to produce food. So I'm just gonna set up really quick so I can show you all the different kinds of things I'm starting today and kind of talk through some of the nuances because most of the things I'm starting are cold crops with short maturity days, but I'm also starting some warm season loving things like beans and cucumbers and some summer squash that have short maturity days as well because you still can get away with it if you get after it a little bit early. I also wanted to mention the difference between what a light frost and a hard frost is. Um, you've probably heard those terms before and when you Google or try to find out your first average frost date, that typically means your first light frost. And so that refers to anything within the 28 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit range. I'm not sure what that converts to Celsius. Maybe we'll put it on the screen. Um, and then a hard frost is 28 degrees and lower. Uh, so for some crops like the summer, short season summer varieties I'm going to be planting today. I've got cucumbers, corn, beans, um, those things I have to make sure they fit within the window before, before that first average frost date. Otherwise that first frost will take them. But there are a lot of things, a lot of these cold crops that can take quite a bit of cold and in fact sometimes it can improve their flavor. Like uh, root crops like turnips and parsnips, carrots, beets. They all t get really tasty when they have to go through a little bit of cold like that. Uh, kale, a spinach, lettuce, chard, um, cabbage, those can all withstand a light frost as well. And there are two types of fall crops that I'm not gonna be planting today because it's actually too early. So uh, all of my greens and my radishes, those are a little bit heat sensitive uh, and they don't germinate very well when it's really hot outside. And it was 102 yesterday, it looks beautiful. To, it is a beautiful day today, but it's still 98 degrees outside. Um, so it's just too warm for those. And they're such a fast turnaround crop that typically we wait until mid to late August to plant those. I mean, radishes, you can have, I think there's some varieties that are like 23 days and you can uh, harvest them, like from planting the seed to harvest. So an amazing crop, if you're a first time gardener or if you have your kids, you wanna get your kids involved to have something that produces that quick, it's super satisfying. But I'm gonna wait on those two things until later. So now I'll show you all my seeds. So here they are. On this side here, these are our warm season loving short maturity day crops. So I've got a couple different kinds of beans, Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans, these are a 63 day, Jade Beans, which are a bush bean, 62 day, Black Beauty Squash, which is our zucchini, is 62 day, Basil, this is a quick crop to come up, Pickling Cucumbers are a 50 day, Space Master Cucumbers and Su Yao Longs, and the Telegraph Improved are all around 60 day, and then Sweetness Corn is 68 day. So all of these uh, blank envelopes come out of the bulk seed bins down at the garden center. Um, so they don't have any pictures or any other information, but I love getting seeds out of those bins. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then here are the cold crops I'm starting today. We've got Oregon Sugar Pod Pea, 68 day. Same for the Early Gray Sugar Pod. And then progress number nine. Uh, we've got a couple different herbs here, the parsley and cilantro. 
and then bull's blood beets and golden beets, which are both 60 day. And then just several different types of carrots. I thought it'd be fun to just put a whole bunch in there. The Nantes carrots are 68 day. Uh, let's see the Parisian and these are kind of the same. These are a 65 day and then the Danvers are a 70, 73 day. So since I have between 75 and 80 plus days, that was kind of, of a conservative guess before our first average frost, all of these things should fit within that window. And that's why it's important to figure out those two pieces of information, that first average frost date and how many days to maturity of the variety you want to plant, because they will vary. I mean, there are some kind of squashes that take 130 days to mature, while some of them will only take, what is it? 62 days for the zucchini. So you just need to be mindful of those dates. And the only other things I'm missing other than my greens and radishes, which will go in later, are uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. And I'm waiting to pick up starts from the garden center with those. I could have started my own seeds inside. They don't germinate well in the heat. Um, so it's a good idea to either start them inside a little bit earlier where it's cooler um, and let them kind of put on a little growth inside and then let the days cool, cool off a little bit um, before you plant them out or just pick up starts at your garden center, which I'm gonna do. Taking the easy route this time. So that was basically all of the important information. Um, now I'm gonna amend this area. I've got my uh, land and sea compost here and I have only one bag, like part bag of, oh my goodness, it's got a hole in the bottom. No wonder it's a part bag of Biotone starter fertilizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use Garden Tone for the rest since I'm out. I've got Biotone coming, it's just not here yet. And honestly, if you guys find yourself in a bind and you cannot find Biotone anywhere, Garden Tone or Plant Tone, they all work really well. Biotone is definitely my number one choice, especially when you're starting a new crop, um, but they're all great fertilizers. And you will never regret amending your soil. Honestly, it's worth every bit of effort. And I wish I would have done more out here. I'm thankful that things are growing as well as they are. Um, and I did uh, amend each individual spot, but I didn't really amend each area fully. Uh, and it's always worth it, especially if you're harvesting some of your summer crops and you're cleaning out areas and then replanting for fall in those spots, like this is all bare. I'm not taking any crop from this. This is gonna be the first crop ever. So it's a little bit atypical, but if I was going to be like cleaning out my onions, say, in our raised beds, I would need to make sure to amend that soil because the crop before it utilized a lot of the nutrients in that bed. So you wanna replace the nutrients so your new crops have a good chance. So that's enough talking for now. I'm gonna just get everything planted and then I'll give you a tour of the whole thing. P.S. This is what I'm using to uh, mark all of my stuff. This is the marker I use. It lasts way longer than a permanent marker. And then these big old white tags. here forever it only took about an hour and 45 minutes I think it's the heat so let's do a real quick walk through in these two rows I planted sweetness corn together kind of in a block instead of all in one row it's better for pollination that way so that's what's in the first parts of that those two rows and then the rest of this row are all peas so progress number nine first, which these are dwarf plants. They do not require any staking. Then we've got the early gray sugar peas here and then organ sugar pot on the end. I'm gonna have to put some sort of some something around them to keep them happy and upright because they do get quite large. Um, and then after the sweetness corn in this row, there are golden beets 
and then a little bit of bull's blood beets. And then what I did here on both sides of this trellis, this is the Titan TP trellis, I think is what it's called. Or er, I don't know. It's one of the Titan trellises. Anyway, it's the perfect span right here. And I planted one row of Kentucky Wonder pole beans on either side of it so they can crawl up. And then I planted jade beans here to right up to the Kentucky Wonder and then this whole row and then jade beans from the end of the trellis over. Same thing on this side. So this whole section is beans. And then the rest of this row here, we start with carrots. So there's Parisian carrots and then Oh, Tonda de Parigi carrots? I have no idea how to say that. Anyway, they're just like Parisian carrots. Then there's Danvers half longs and then Nantes. We're gonna have lots of carrots. Then we've got basil and cilantro and then that's where the beans start. This entire row is full of cucumbers. And the reason why I did that, I did, um, let's see, three different varieties. I thought I had four varieties, but one of the envelopes the Space Master Cucumber didn't have any seeds in it. <laughs> so I must have used them a different year and accidentally saved that packet. Anyway, I've got four mounds of, or four hills rather, of three different varieties. So the first four are pickling cucumbers, and then we've got the Suyao Long. They used to be called Suyao Nishiki. I don't know if they're still called that ever. Um, and then the Telegraph Cucumbers, which are like an English cucumber right there. And then in the back half, after the obelisk here, there's three Black Beauty zucchinis. I don't know why I planted three zucchini plants, except for the fact that these cucumbers and zucchini, they don't really have time to produce a ton of fruit or a ton of vegetables rather. Um, so anyway, we'll get some off of those three. And then the rest of this row is parsley. So I ended up not leaving any room for greens and radishes and the broccoli, cauliflower and cabbage but I have room still, a little bit of room up in the front corner. Um, I meant to plant more zinnias, and then I just kind of thought, I've got a lot of zinnias planted. Um, so I'm just gonna pop some stuff up there as I kind of pick it up at the garden center or once it cools down and I can seed it. I did water all of these in by hose. Even though there's a drip system set up and they will be watered automatically after this point, I always like to water everything in myself the first time just to make sure everything's settled in properly and it's all looking really good. It's just amazing to me that I can spend an hour and 45 minutes planting a ton of stuff. And then in anywhere from like 50 to I think my longest day was 68 days, I'm gonna have a ton of produce in this area. It's just totally worth planting a fall garden because you can get so much more production out of your space if you're just, like willing to get out in the heat, that's the only thing. It is kind of hard to get out here and like want to work the soil and add stuff in when you're sweating it up. I mean, it can be rough. So anyway, that's it for today's project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Cannot wait to give you updates and show you like harvest videos. I'm just getting ready to do harvest videos of my onions and potatoes just to show you because I think based on what I can tell, I think they're gonna be pretty, pretty great harvest this year. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.